Hi everyone. Today in Physics Lab, we're going to go ahead and build a little apparatus to measure the principles of Coulomb's law. Our goal here is really just to observe a bit of the inverse square law of the electrostatic force, which is that the force is going to get stronger as we bring two charged objects together. We're going to create two charged objects by using styrofoam, or if you don't have access to styrofoam, a little ball of plastic wrap should work, and then go ahead and mount these two objects together. We're going to charge them up, and we're going to move them close, and then use a little protractor scale here to measure the angle of deflection. So without further ado, let's take a look at how we're going to build our apparatus. This is the equipment we're going to need for the lab. It's a little bit of physics, arts, and crafts. We'll need a ruler for our measurements. We'll need a little bit of thread or dental floss, in this case, to uh, suspend our uh, test charges. We'll need a couple of long rods. I'm just using a pair of chopsticks here. Uh, some scissors to cut the thread. Uh, I didn't have a protractor, so I used the one that comes with the lab manual. I'm going to print and cut this out. And then I find that it's easiest to sort of punch holes through the styrofoam with a little toothpick or something long and sharp. So I can go ahead and do that. And the first thing I want to do is to thread uh, this, these threads into the styrofoam. So I can just go ahead and uh, punch a little hole in it and uh, take my thread through. What we're going to do is we're going to tie a little loop in the end of our uh, thread and we're going to slide it around the chopstick and uh, just tighten it up. Uh, and then we're going to make a little triangle. So we want to suspend the styrofoam uh, in a triangle so that it only is going to swing in one direction. So what you can see is we formed a nice little triangle here and our styrofoam is going to hang on the end of it uh, and just swing in one direction. It's going to have a hard time swinging back and forth side to side. Repeat for the other one. So when you're done, you should end up with two pieces of styrofoam suspended by thread or floss from these two rods and the triangles should, be, should have them hanging about the same distance below uh, the rods here. The next thing that we want to do is to suspend a weight from one of them. Doesn't really matter what you use, but this just keeps the styrofoam from swinging. We want it to hang straight down in a vertical plane. So I went looking around and I found an eraser that I'm going to use as the weight to suspend here. So I just need to grab one more piece of floss, uh, punch it through. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. So just make a little hole and punch it through, and then suspend the eraser underneath, or whatever you've chosen for weight, underneath this piece of styrofoam. When you're done with the arts and crafts, go ahead and set up your physics experiment like this. You'll want to have the two rods held down by a couple of books. Uh, I've put the protractor around one of the compass rods, the one without the weight. The other weight here, uh, the one with the weight, is going to be suspended straight down, uh, holding it roughly vertically here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move the one with the weight closer and farther apart from the two pieces of styrofoam once they are charged. So at this point, you're ready to charge things up. You'll notice that I've set things up now so that they're hanging vertically and there's a little bit of wobble because there are air currents in the room, but you'll notice that this piece here is sitting at about straight 90 degrees down. So once you've set up your apparatus, the next thing we want to do is charge up the two pieces of styrofoam with the same type of charge. Styrofoam is a material that we chose because it readily grabs electrons from other objects. We have to find something that's going to lose electrons really easily. And it turns out that the thing that we have, most of us, that's really accessible is human hair. So human hair really likes to give off its electrons. Styrofoam is going to go ahead and grab them easily. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put a net negative charge on these two pieces of styrofoam, doing the apparently ridiculous rubbing the styrofoam against your hair. So give it a try. Once you've gone ahead and charged the two pieces up with negative charge, you can take a look at your reading. And I can see that my 
piece of styrofoam has deflected from the 90 degree angle mark. So it clearly is charged. So what I'm going to do next is measure the two distances or the distances between the two rods. So I can go ahead and measure this off. It's 17 centimeters in this case. Then without discharging or affecting the styrofoam, so don't touch the pieces of styrofoam, I want to go ahead and bring the rods closer together. And you might be able to see that this then deflects a little bit further. Let's sort of play with it. Uh, and it'll have a larger angle. I'm going to go ahead and record that angle and the distance between the two rods. In this case, at about nine centimeters. So what we want to go ahead and do is fit, make these two measurements at two different separations and the two different angles. These will not be large angles unless you get a really good charge on there, but try to measure them fairly carefully using the apparatus that's given. As is covered in your lab manual, we're going to analyze this using the notion of force balance. If you work out the forces in this situation, you'll find that the Coulomb force, F sub C, is equal to mg tan theta, where m is the mass of the styrofoam and theta is the angle that the styrofoam deflects from the vertical. The real Coulomb force would just be what Coulomb wrote down, k q1 q2 over r squared. If you look at this expression, the power on r, the distance between the styrofoams, is negative 2, so it's r to the negative 2. So we can actually rewrite the Coulomb force law as Fc is equal to a times r to the negative 2, where a is a constant. Of course, in the real force law, we know that that constant has a value of k, q1, q2, but we're going to pretend that we don't know it, and we're just going to focus on the power, negative 2. Instead of assuming that the power in the Coulomb law is r to the negative 2, we are actually going to try to measure it. So we're going to write down a force law that says that the Coulomb force is equal to a times r to some unknown power beta. Your lab manual works through the math where we show that beta can be determined from two measurements of the angle and the separation. And the math for that gives us that beta is the ratio of these two logs here. So natural log of tan theta 1 over tan theta 2 divided by natural log of r1 over r2. So we'll just go ahead and measure these two quantities and form this ratio. We can actually measure the error in the power beta uh, that expression is given here and in your lab manual where delta indicate the uncertainties on these measurements. Note, and this is very important, that you must be measuring theta in the units of radians and not degrees for this error formula to work out. Uh, notice also the beta in front, so this is essentially determining the fractional error, error in beta. So go ahead Use your data and try to measure what beta and its uncertainty is and compare to the theoretical measure of beta equals negative 2. Thanks for watching. That's everything you need to know to study the properties of the Coulomb Force Law. Go on out and make some science.